same party that me and Yachty, me, Yachty, Nestle, Cardi, everybody used to go to, House of Lotus. Trippy Red used to try and sneak into these, which is so hilarious. Everything was just a get together. Like, and when Atlanta, the Atlanta music scene back then, like, everybody was just going to the same things. You f constantly saw familiar faces of, until, like, you guys all rose through the ranks of whatever and just everybody came up together. So Nestle came up with the name because I used to wear this fake Burberry scarf. And we're talking about Atlanta. Nobody knows that. <laughs> I used to wear this fake Burberry scarf around town. It's called Henry County. It's like south of Atlanta. Uh, I was not hoping to put it on the map, but <laughs> I guess I did. Nestle came up with the name because Burberry obviously rhymes with Perry. After that, Yachty told me, I, I wasn't going to take the name serious, but Yachty told me I should take the name serious because everybody started calling me it, but I hated it at first because like it was just a nickname, but it kind of just stuck to me. So I grew to love it, and then Burberry came after me. I think it might be because the, the, the tape I had dropped, the one with the Burberry print on it, but technically it wasn't Burberry print, but was very close. I woke up one day, and I was on TMZ. Well, a bunch of people kept tagging me on TMZ, and I thought it was fake at first. Till I went to the TMZ website and saw me at the top in like big bold letters. And I was like, really? Day later, I woke up again and there was a big stack of papers that was like, I mean a box, like a literally box of papers that was sent to me. I didn't really look through the papers, but I went to the last page and it says, you know, failure to appear in court. I said, whoa. So I was like, yeah, you guys can have the name. The Good Pair was kind of like an old name of mine like an old transitionary name. A lot of people don't believe my name is Perry when I, when I say that, which is crazy. They'd be like, what the fuck is your real name? i will be like, it's Perry, bro. It was in January of, I don't know if it's 2016 or 2015, but it was in January of one of those years. Coach hit us up, and after that, everything kind of just changed. Nothing was the same after that. I bought like this little converter thing where you can like plug it in and then it turns into like uh, those wall plugs. Yeah, I was living in my car for a while before. I made one night in my car, Honda Civic Coupe 2006. But my mom reported the car stolen, so I left it at a gas station with the key on the, on the tire and she has it now, or as I believe she does. I made it very quickly, I sent it to Yachty and um, it was, it was a, I think it was like his birthday gift for me, which is very ironic. I uh, met him at a party called House of Lotus, a very clouded spot, well, used to be clouded spot in Atlanta. Like, I was excited because it was like the only person to ever hop on my beat, a beat of mine at the time. I didn't know how to take it at first, you know what I mean? Because like, I'm thinking next, like, Okay, so how do, we, how do I move on? How do I move from this? It didn't sound weird to me at the time, but everybody I played it for, it sounded extremely weird too. So I, that also made me like uneasy, but I was like, how do I take this? Like, should I change my beat style? Other than that, like, I'm glad it went the way it did though. Everything went the way it did. Out of the car, into Yachty's room, into a penthouse, and then into my own house. It's not really banter about spending money. It literally, I, the song was done and someone had called me to talk to me about like, just to mumble on about something and I kind of, it was recording at the time and I was like, oh fuck it, I'm just gonna keep it because it sounds cool. It's, it's really about like old friends and old like girlfriends and stuff like that. So here's one thing I learned from my manager who's actually a very wise guy, you know. He told me that animals get unconditional love Babies get unconditional love. Men do not get unconditional love. Love is always conditional. And that's very much so fact. No matter what girl, I know there's about to be a lot of girl power girls on this video, but no matter what, men do not get unconditional love from anybody. That's a Chris Rock special? What the fuck? Fuck you, B. <laughs> Fucking hell. Made me think that was your original quote. It's addressing that and it's also addressing how like how people like, they kind of let you down in ways, but like you, like you always kind of like dust it off in a way, you know? 
But you hope that they miss you at the end of the day. But it's so fucked up that you have to end up in a better predicament for somebody to miss you, which is extremely fucked up. Why do, why do I have to make you proud in order for you to miss me? Everybody has their own form of self-medication, so don't, like, don't be like, yo, bro, you're fucking retarded. Like, I see people under people's fucking pictures. You're fucking retarded, fucking stupid bitch. Stop drinking. Oh, can I say, can I curse? I feel like, the, like all the drug shaming, like, fuck Zans, fuck lean, uh, whatever, uh, shit, like, I think all that should stop. Even though it's a trend, and I'm happy it's getting kids to stop doing drugs, but for the ones that are already on it, I feel like it's kind of, like, fucked up to them. It's kind of like... You left them out in the dust, in a way. Don't bully kids, bro. Don't bully these kids. The whole culture of high school is kind of like the teachers attack the kids, the kids attack the weaker kids. Like it's, it's like, it's all built like that. The best thing I can say is like, just stop fucking with the kids that are like slightly more different than you. Like as much as, as, much as you want to be like, yo, bro, them jeans are crazy ass today. <laughs> don't don't bring them. Don't wear them tomorrow. Like whatever. As much as you want to say a funny joke about somebody, bro, chill out. I had a crush on this girl, and I remember she called me fucking ugly in front of everybody in class, and it was fucking terrible. I remember I I like hated her for like a week. In certain areas, it's like kind of like kids kind of make it their job to pick it on to pick on you. So like the other kids, like once it's funny, it's kind of like their job to jump in. So it's, it's kind of fucking sucks. She has hit me up, which is very ridiculous. Every girl I've ever had a crush on all throughout school has hit me up. Make it home safe. Every day you leave home, you don't know if you're gonna make it home safe. And, and one day I was driving and I came up with the idea for make it home safe while sitting in the car with my friend Nestle, because he was like, like names should be blunt but mean something, like the titles for certain things. So like, make it home safe is the bluntest way for me to say, hey bro, you should make it home safe today. Or like, make sure you make it home safe because we all care, if somebody cares about you out there. It's gonna be my first studio album. I'm going to wait until I have like, complete control over everything can like, and have the resources to like, orchestrate things I wanted to orchestrate and all kinds of stuff to make or drop, make it home safe.